Hey guys, this is Mac Ibs and One. In this complex, maybe two or three parter, Objective C Lesson One, I'm going to be teaching you how to use the Coco library, how to declare variables, how to initialize NS strings, and much more in this first Mac programming lesson. In this lesson, we are going to make a simple application that has one window. In the window, there's a label and a button. When you click the button, the label's check text changes. The label's text is also the amount of seconds since 1990 or since 1970 when you first opened the application. And it'll continue being the amount of seconds since 1970 whenever you click the button. So, I'll open up Xcode and I'll make a new location Coco application and I will call it time since then. So the time we're actually getting is called the epoch time. There's a C function that will get the epoch time, which is the time since 1970. But it's it's cool to be able to incorporate this in your Objective-C code. So first of all, we're going to add a new class that, that Interface Builder is going to be interacting with. Since I showed you how to use classes in Java, hopefully you're following that, and you will be more familiar. So I'm going to create a new Coco. Objective C class. I'm going to call it App Controller. This is a class that I will soon include in my Interface Builder project. Variables are very much the same in Objective C as they are in Java. So it's the class name or variable name, um, and then the name of the variable. Normally, you'd put a star before the name of the variable to make it called a pointer, and I'll explain that more to you later. So right here, I'm going to make a variable that is an NS text field class, and that's what a label is. So I'll make it, it you have to type IB outlet before it. I'll explain that to you in a second. Then I'll declare it as NS text field star, and then I'll call it label one. So IB outlet is something that gets removed when you actually build and go your app. But it tells Interface Builder that you want that it's possible to link up um, an NS text field field in the actual interface to this variable. So any X, um, NS text field in the ver in the interface, which will be our label, will be able to be linked up to this variable. And that means when this program actually gets run, this variable will be that text field. Now, here's where it says Add Interface. Add interface is where all the variables and stuff will be. Before this add end is where all the methods and functions will be. And by the way, we are in app controller .h. The .h is where things are declared, but you don't actually write any actual code. Just um, you tell the computer that you want to have functions and variables with these names. And the .m that's where you actually type your code in the actual code that happens. So the way you declare uh, a method is you do dash before the method, then left parenthesis, the return type of the method, right parenthesis, IB action gets replaced with void when you actually build and go the application, but it's once again for interface builder to recognize that you can link this up with something. And then after the close parenthesis, you do the um, method name, so I'll say button clicked. And then for the first parameter, you just do colon, left parenthesis again. The variable type, I'm going to do ns button star. And then the variable name, I'm going to call it sender. So the way this will work is in Interface Builder in a moment, we're going to make it so when they click this button, it calls this method on this class, app controller. And um, this way, it'll it'll pass as the first parameter the NS button that triggered the event. So when you click an NS button that calls button clicked, sender will be the NS button. So I'm going to copy this and implement it in the .m. So it's exactly the same here except you use curly braces to do this. So right here is just saying, okay, I'm gonna have something that's like this. And here it's saying, okay, I want to have uh, an, an IB outlet variable. So 
this is the code inside of these two curly braces, this one and this one, that will happen when they click the button. So I'm going to say label one, which is our variable I declared in the dot h, set string value. And for now, I'm just going to make it be hello. Now, I just realized that I declared it as an NS text view when it's an NS text field. Sorry about that. So now, I'm going to just do another example of method calling. A way a method call works is you do left bracket, the name of the class or variable that you're going to call the method on. In this case, it's label1, space, and then the name of the method. In this case, there's a method on every NS label or NS text field that is set string value. And it takes one parameter, and that parameter is an NS string that's going to be the text. So an NS string is the class in Objective C that holds text. So in Java, it was string with a capital S, um, but it's NS string spelled this way. NS string is very good once you learn how to use it. There is an NS string class, of course, and that's Apple's class. The thing is that, you know, Objective C is just C with a few add ons. So in C, when you just do quote, quote, it makes a character array. But with Objective C, how do you use quotes to make an NS string instead of just a plain old character array? The way you do it is you put at before the quotes, and that makes that tells it that you want to make an NS string, not a character array, out of this text. So we're going to set the string value to be an NS string that's text is going to be hello. So this is all for our code for now. Now we're going to go into resources and edit main menu.xib. In the XIB, we're going to drag an object, which is a blue thing, onto the window that's called our document window. If you go to window document, this is where it is. Now, here's the blue object right here. It's an NS object right now. And we're going to change its class to be app controller. So now this represents an app controller. So now I'm going to drag on a NS text field, which is actually a label, but its class is NS text field. I'm just going to make it say hello world right now. And we're going to be, of course, changing its text with the program. And now I'm going to drag a button, which is an NS button. Doesn't matter what type of button we use. On here, and it is an NS button. So this doesn't have to look pretty, it's just an example. So I'll, hold, I'll click and then hold control and drag it over to app control. And when you're dragging stuff over to a file, that means you're setting an IB action, which in t return is just a method. So we're going to set button clicked. So since we control clicked from click me to app controller, it thinks we're setting the method that click me will call on app controller when it's clicked. So now whenever we click this button, it'll call button clicked on app controller. So now we just want to assign label one on app controller to be this label. So I'll click control from app controller to the label and set it to label one. This makes a lot of sense to me, but it may not to you at first. So feel free to ask a lot of questions. So now I have this very small window. I'm going to get make sure there's no text on the window so that way it doesn't look too cluttered. So now, it will work the way we wanted it to. And all we have to do is add the time feature. So while it's building and going, I'll explain the time feature. We NS string has an option on it to make it so that it initializes with something called a format. If you remember from our C lessons, we did formats where you do printf like percent %s, then the next parameter has to be something that is a character array, etc. Strings have the same options on them, ns strings do.
As you know, Objective-C is a very hard and complex language. And being so, I feel that this first Objective-C lesson with Max must be two parts. So go watch part two of this wonderful tutorial to finish off this program and make it work just right. Thanks for watching. Check out part two and goodbye.